Our tutorial number six, bivariate measures of association in R. In this tutorial, we will primarily focus on bivariate measures of association, in particular bivariate regression and correlation for interval ratio variables. We will also be analyzing a new data set that I have open on the screen here. This data set, which is posted on the course website, uses data from 21 OECD countries, including Canada. The OECD dataset contains 21 cases and 15 variables. Each case refers to a country, which means that we will be comparing countries, not individuals, for this lab. OECD stands for the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. It has been in place since the 1960s and contains a total of 34 countries, generally the richer countries around the world. We will analyze a subset of these countries for this lab. The variable names and sources are described in the codebook post on the website, which I also have open here for you. And the OECD data are in the same format as the Alberta survey data. So we will follow the same procedures for saving the data files, reading them into R, and setting the working directory. So as you can see here, we have a CSV file for the OECD data, which is open. And you can see the different countries listed and the different variables as well. So you first want to begin by downloading and saving the data in R code files that you'll be working with for this lab assignment. The files are located on the course website under week 13. The data file is named oecd.csv and the R code file is named week13.code.r. I recommend saving them both to the same folder together. So next you want to then go open up R Studio after you've saved these files and open up your week 13 lab code, which I have open here for you as well. After you do that, you want to set your working directory. And the working directory for this lab should be where you have saved the data and R code files on your computer. You can set the working directory by going to Session, Set Working Directory, and either setting it to the source file location or choosing the directory manually. So let's just go choose this directory. And in this case, I have it saved under SOS 210 and under labs and under lab code for my case. So now that I've set the working directory and I can see it here in the console window, I want to go through and read in the data file using the same commands as before. So we can see here that we're calling this data file data2 and we're using the function read.csv with oecd.csv as the name of our data file and we're also saying header equals true, which means that the first row is going to tell us the names of our variables. So let's read that in and see what happens. All right, it looks like it's read in okay. We can also see down here in that our workspace that we have data two with 21 observations of 15 variables. Now we can get the dimensions here, which we also see is 21 and 15. We can also see the list of our data names and also a summary of our data variables. So here we have the different names of our variables and summaries for each of them, which include things like the median and the mean. After seeing that, we then want to attach our data so that we can begin to analyze it for this lab. So now that we've read our data in OK and we've attached it to our directory, we want to take some time to look at descriptive statistics. And to get an idea of the data, you should always start with some descriptive statistics. Here we want to focus on summarizing data with numbers and also with graphs. So let's start by summarizing our data with some numbers. And here we're going to be using some of the same commands as before. So let's first get the mean, median, and standard deviation for life expectancy, which in this case refers to the average life expectancy in each country. So if we run all of these together, we can see that the mean for life expectancy is about 80.95 years, the median is about 80.8 years, and the standard deviation is about 1.04 years for life expectancy. We can do the same thing for the incarceration rate, which refers to the number of imprisoned people per 1 million in the population for each country. And we see the values over here for incarceration in terms of the mean, median, and standard deviation. We can also do this for the level of trust as well. And here the level of trust refers to the percentage of people who agree that most people in the population can be trusted. We can also run that and we get those values over here again. So the mean, median, and standard deviation commands are key to getting descriptive, interval, 
descriptive information about interval ratio variables. For nominal variables, however, which we have few of in this data set, we, want, we still want to rely on frequencies and percentages. So here we have regime, which refers to each country's welfare regime. And we want to use table and prop.table to give us our frequencies and percentages. So if we run those together, we can see that six countries are re referred to as conservative welfare regimes, seven are liberal regimes, four are rudimentary regimes, and four are social democratic regimes. If we put that into percentages, which we may not always want to do with these small numbers, we can see them down here in this case as well. So that's how we can summarize our data using numbers. So in addition to using numbers, we can also summarize our data graphically. And here we want to focus on creating histograms for interval ratio variables. The function hist, H-I-S-T, is going to plot a histogram for each variable. And that plot is then going to appear in your window down here. So let's try this for life expectancy. We'll use hist and life, our variable for life expectancy, and see what we get. So after running that, you'll see that the plot appears down here. And you'll also see that we have frequencies uh, for life expectancy along the y-axis here, and then our different values for life expectancy here, which is ranging from about 78 to 83. And you see these different bars, which represent the frequencies within each of those categories. In addition to just using hist to plot things, we can also edit things within the histogram function. And this includes the title of our graph, which we can change by using uh, main equals within our function hist. So now we have hist life, but we're also saying main equals histogram of life expectancy. If we run that, we see that the title now gives us the full name of what we're looking at, a histogram of life expectancy. In addition to changing the main title, you can also change the x-axis and y-axis labels using xlab equals and ylab equals. So if we do that, we can add in xlab equals life expectancy in years, and we'll keep the y label the same using frequency. Let's run that, and we'll see that we've now changed the x-axis label down here at the bottom of the chart. In addition to looking at life expectancy, we can do the exact same things for levels of trust as you see in the code here. And now we can see that we have a histogram of trust, and we see that we are getting the percentage of respondents who agree that most people can be trusted in each of those countries. Now that we've seen some different ways to describe our data using numbers and histograms for interval ratio variables, I want to move on and talk about bivariate association for interval var ratio variables. And here we want to start with a first step by making scatter plots. R is a great tool for making bivariate scatter plots. And to do so, you're going to use the function plot, P-L-O-T. And plot requires that you tell it your x and your y variable. Your x var variable is going to go first, and your y variable is going to go second, separated by a comma. So here we see in this example we have plot x comma y. So let's try plotting income inequality and trust to see what we get. So we've created a scatter plot for income inequality and trust, which appears in our window here. And we see that we have income inequality as measured by the 2020 income ratio on our x-axis and trust on our y-axis here. Income inequality ranges from about 3.4 to 8.55 on this x-axis, and trust ranges from about 10 to 66.5. And within our scatter plot, we see that each dot here shows us each case and how it intersects in terms of inter income inequality and trust on each of the variables. And we can also edit the title and axes labels just like we did with histogram. So if we go back to our editor here, we can change what we have for main, our x label, and our y label. So let's run that and see what we get in this case. Now we have a more detailed labeling of our specific scatter plot. We have a main title at the top, and we also see that we have the 2020 income ratio on the x axis and the level of trust on the y axis. And if you wish, there's a lot more that you can do with scatter plots in R. So you can also change the color and shape of the different points. So to change the color, you're going to use CLL and then type in the color by name. To change the shape, you're going to use PCH equals and a number. The different numbers with PCH correspond to different shapes. You can determine which shape corresponds to which number by going to the help file for PCH and typing help p 
PCH. So say in this example we want to create red squares instead of these open circles that we have here. So now we have our same plot function, income inequality, trust, our main label, our x-axis label, and our y-axis label. Now we also want to add cull, C-O-L equals red, and you want to make sure to put that in quotations because it's a word. And we're going to use PCH equals 15 for squares. So let's run that. And we can see now that in our plot window we have red squares instead of those open circles that represent each case in our data set. So now I also want to mention something about saving these different plots. If you want to save this plot and you're using RStudio, you can go to Export, which is right above the plot. And this is going to give you three options. Save plot as image, save plot as PDF, and copy plot to a clipboard. I recommend saving the plot as a PDF. If you click on Save as PDF, you will see that we have the option to choose the size of the plot. So we can have a custom size here, or we could choose any of these different sizes. And you also have an option of choosing the orientation and choosing the directory where you'll save it in. So right now it's going to save it in the same directory as we have all of our other code and data saved in. So right now it's calling this rplot2, and you can also tell it you want to see the plot after you save it. So for example, we can now save it, and we can see in preview in this case our different plot of trust and inequality in OECD countries. However, you can also use the command copy to clipboard, which will do something a little bit different. I just clicked on zoom, which also shows you a close-up picture of your plot. So let's go back to export, click on copy plot to clipboard. It's going to open up here in your clipboard, and you can again decide on the different width and height for it. You can also tell it to maintain its aspect ratio, and you can update it for any of the changes you make. However, once you say copy plot to clipboard, you can then click copy plot. And what that does is save it to the clipboard, so then you can quickly paste it into Word if that's where you're writing report. So now that we've seen how to create, label, and save scatter plots, I want to move on to talk about bivariate regression in R. Now that we've seen the basic scatter plot, we should compute the regression coefficients. And the function that you will use here is LM, which stands for linear model. For LM, you should enter your Y variable, your dependent variable first, and then your x variable or your independent variable second, just like you would when writing the equation. However, instead of an equal sign, you're going to use a tilde to separate the two. Thus, when we want to know about the relationship between income inequality and trust, we're going to type lm trust tilde income inequality. And here we're calling this reg1 to name our regression. So let's run that. And because we've named it something, we're not getting any specific output from our regression. However, we often want to do that because that way we are creating a new object, reg1, with the regression output and saving it in R. And in order to get our output, we're going to use summary reg1, which will tell us what's going on here. So once you use summary reg1, you're going to get a lot of things over here in your console window. And there are several things that I want to draw your attention to in this output. So as a result, R tells you the various coefficients from your equation in the estimate column. It also gives you the standard error, a t-value, and the probability of getting a t-value greater than the absolute value of t that you have here. So to go through these, the estimates are your intercept A and your slope B related to your independent variable. Thus, in this example, A equals 77.69, and b equals negative 6.6. .6. The other values under coefficients relate to hypothesis testing. The standard error is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution for each estimate. The t value is your t obtained for a t test. So in this case, don't worry about it for the intercept in this row here, but you're going to pay attention to the value for your independent variable. And then finally, PR in parentheses, greater than sign, absolute value of T, that's going to give you the associated P value for the T test. And the asterisks next to it tell you the significance level related to alpha. And we can see down here with our significance code that two asterisks mean that is significant at alpha level of 0 0.01 in this particular example. Underneath the table, you get more information. We also get the residual standard error. This is something that we have not calculated. 
It relates to the sum of squared deviations from the regression line, or the residual sum of squares. To calculate it, you would first calculate the residual sum of squares, then divide by your degrees of freedom, and then take the square root of that. Below that, we get the multiple r-squared and the adjusted r-squared. The multiple r-squared is your coefficient of determination, your r-squared. In a bivariate model, you can then get Pearson's r by taking the square root of the multiple r-squared. However, we have to be careful because it won't always give us the correct sign. So if b is negative, though, r should also be negative. So in this case, we have our multiple r-squared equal to 0 0.3688. If we then go ahead and take the square root of that, we're going to get a value of 0 0.6072891 for our r. However, we would also have to add a negative sign because as we see here with our slope, there is a negative relationship between income inequality and trust. The adjusted r squared next to it also adjusts, adjusts for the number of predictors or independent variables that you have in the model. Below that, we also get an f statistic that would be your f obtained that you would get if you had used ANOVA and its associated p-value next to it. So for example, if we also did an ANOVA test of this and called it ANOVA1, we could run that and we see that we get the same f statistic of 11.11 and the same associated p-value as well. Instead of taking the square root of our multiple r squared or our coefficient of determination to figure out Pearson's r, we can also calculate Pearson's correlation coefficient outside of a regression equation. And here we're going to use the function cor, core, with the variables that we're interested in. So in this case, we're interested in trust and income inequality. If we use that with our function core, you'll see that we get a value of negative 0.6072721 in this case which, if you go back up here, is similar to what we got when we took the square root of 0.3688, except now we see definitely that our relationship is negative between these two variables. And also, if you remember, Pearson's correlation coefficient is a symmetric measure, so it doesn't matter the order that we put our variables in. And we will both get the same answer no matter what order they're in. So if we switch them around, we see that we get the same value for Pearson's correlation coefficient. In class, we also talked about getting predicted values for our different x values. We can do that in R2 using the predict function with our regression. So here, if we want to calculate y prime for each x value, we would use predict and then add in what we called our regression output, in this case, reg1. So if we do that, we're going to get a list of y prime values for each of our different cases. And these values that fall uh, or these values are those that fall along the regression line for each value of x. So with number 1 here, we see we get a value of about 31.52. And that's going to correspond with our first x value of income inequality for our first country, Australia. So that's going to be corresponding with an x value of 7 in this example. As a final part of this lab, I want to go back to our scatter plots. So after plotting the values and computing the regression, you can add a regression line to your scatter plot with the function AB line along with LM. So here we can create our plot again. So if we use plot, income inequality, trust, give it a title, give it an X label and a Y label. If we run that, we'll see our plot over here in our window. And interestingly with, interestingly with plots, you can also go back and forth through your history. So for example, we could all, all go all the way back and see it back here as well. So we've just plotted it again. And now we want to add our regression line. So we're going to use AB line. And inside of that, we're going to put our function for our regression, LM, trust, tilde, income, and equality. If we do that, we now see that we have a regression line in our scatter plot. And we also see that we have a negative relationship between income and inequality and trust across our countries. In addition, if you saved your regression by name, you can use that name as well instead of saying LM, trust, income, and equality again. So here we can plot that again and just use AB line with the name of our regression. And you see we get the exact same thing in this plot window here. We just went over how to look at bivariate relationships with two interval ratio variables in R. I want to also discuss bivariate relationships with nominal and interval ratio variables, which is actually something that we've already done. So for example, 
What if we want to know how the level of trust varies across different welfare regimes? Another variable in our OECD data. We can first start by visualizing this relationship using box plots. Because one variable is nominal, which is regime, we can use this box plot to vary, visualize the difference in mean levels of trust across each of the four welfare regimes that we have. So here the command that we're going to use is box plot. And you're going to again enter your dependent variable, trust, and our independent variable, regime in this case. We can also give it a title, levels of trust by welfare regime, a label for the x-axis, regime, and a label for the y-axis, trust. So if we do that, we can now see we have what's referred to as a box and whisker plot in our plot window. And here we have the levels of trust by each welfare regime. So we have the levels for conservative regimes, liberal regimes, rudimentary regimes, and social democratic regimes. And here this helps us to compare the different levels across regimes, but also shows us the spread of different levels, where we see these different whiskers at the end, which gives us the range for each variable. And within the square, we have the 25% and 75% quintiles for this variable. And here, this dark black line actually tells us the median. So these box plots give us a way to visualize the relationship with nominal and interval ratio level variables. And in addition, if we want to test if this relationship is statistically significant, we can use ANOVA. And we're going to do the same thing as before where we interpret our F observed to see if it, to see if it falls in the critical region. And we also want to see how our p-value relates to alpha. So now if we want to do ANOVA with trust and regime, we can see what we get here. And we see we get an F obtained of 12.45, which is statistically significant at an alpha level of 0.05. So here we see that levels of trust do vary by welfare regimes across countries.